What's up guys, Higgins of Japan here with another edition of the Friday video. The Friday video is a video that I make right here in my car on the way home from work on a Friday. And for once, all of that is absolutely true. I am driving home from work on a Friday. And um, there goes a um, election van, so that's fun. It's election season here in Japan, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about you, a teacher or a wannabe teacher or a maybe you're thinking about being a teacher and coming to Japan. Maybe you know people that want to be teachers and maybe you want to share this video with them. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so it's actually the second week of school being over. Um, but I figured that I would talk about a quick topic here on the way home from work uh, about what to kind of expect when the election trucks drive by while you're trying to make a video. Thank you. Anyways, um, I don't endorse whoever that was. They, they just happened to be in the video, so don't don't vote. Don't don't vote. If you if you take anything away from away from this video, it's that you shouldn't vote. Um, oh, that's headquarters for one of the ladies that's running. Anyways, this video is not about elections whatsoever. It's not political. It is about your first week at school and what are you going to do your first week of school because. Um, Maybe you're new to Japan and maybe you're new to teaching and not really sure what exactly you're going to be doing your first week of school. And I can tell you with a little bit of experience that more than likely you won't be doing a whole lot your first week. Um, mostly because you've got new students coming into your school and you've got a whole bunch, probably a whole bunch, you've got a bunch of new teachers that are at your school. Um, and it's the beginning of school, the school year, and so things are still kind of um, not really nailed down as to like who's who's in charge of this thing. And usually that stuff is pretty much nailed down. But there's a there's still a lot of confusion as to who's doing what and who's going where. And you got new kids, and they have to get you know um, checked out by the doctors. So like today, we actually had um, a teacher came to me and said, "Hey, just so you know." Uh, we might have to interrupt class midway through because the dentist is coming in to check out the students. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, whatever, that's fine. Uh, they ended up not showing up until later anyways, and so they didn't mess up my class or anything. So it was all good. But the first couple of weeks of school, that's going to happen. Um, your schedule is going to kind of be a weird, uh, probably not your normal schedule. Um, your classes could be shortened or, or modified due to the fact that you know, ear exams and eye exams and, um, you know, the dentist coming in. Who knows? Who knows what exactly is going to be going on at your school the first week or two um, that's going to kind of um, kind of mess with your schedule. And and so one of the things that I always say in my videos is you got to be flexible if you're going to be a teacher here in Japan. So the first couple of weeks, the first month, I would say be, be fairly flexible with what you're doing because... Um, things could change. Um, also, if you're new at a school, um, Japan has this thing where they love to give speeches and everybody gives speeches. And so if you're new, um, now this happened to me a couple years ago at my junior high. Um, I came in one morning and they said, Hey, everybody shut up. Andrew's going to introduce himself. And they handed me the microphone because the teacher's office in my junior high is so massive that you have to have a microphone in the PA system to like carry your voice to the whole teacher's office. But, um, uh, yeah, just like a brief, like, Hey, I'm the new English teacher. Let's have a good year. Like that's literally all you have to say. Um, it doesn't even have to be a Japanese to be honest. Um, but yeah, so it's just, you might have to give like a little 30 second speech at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day or whenever they want you to just kind of introduce yourself to the teachers because like I said, there's new teachers that have moved into your school. Um, there's there's um, new students, so they might they might in have you introduce yourself to the students all at once. I've not actually had that happen. They usually just wait and do that until you have like English class because you'll eventually have class with all the students. And um, if you're roaming the halls and doing stuff outside of the classroom or outside of the teacher's office and the classroom, anyways, um, you'll probably run into the, the students and be able to introduce yourself that way as well. Um, usually they don't make you do like a, um, 
like, hey, bring him up. Well, they will bring up all the teachers at the beginning of the school year during, like, an opening ceremony, but you usually don't have to say anything. It's just like, hey, here's the English teacher, and you just wave. Um, so that might happen. So, you know, if you don't like giving speeches and you don't like being on stage, um, just know that you're probably going to have to do that, like, one day <laughs> at the beginning of the school year. Um, yeah, and like I said, with with um, with classes and stuff, and if you've been at the same school for a while, like I have, I've been at the same school for three years now, um, instead of doing, like, there's no reason for you to do a self-introduction lesson every single time, right? The, the students at this point should know who you are if you've been there any length of time. Um, and so what I did, um, and I've done this, I've done this a couple of times this week, um, well, I've done it eight times this week, um, is I did a quiz. I just had the students get into groups and I made a goofy PowerPoint and um, just had a whole bunch of questions about myself and things that they had to guess about me. So it was like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite hobby? You're like, it literally can just be anything that you want it to be. Um, and you know, they talked about it in groups of trying to figure out what it was that I liked and what it was that I was interested in and and all that good stuff. And um, I'm going to try to get around this machine. Uh, But yeah, so it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It's just like the students already knew me, but it was just a fun game to get them like trying to figure out what it was that I liked and didn't like. Um, And then I had all the students at the end of class um, in, in their groups each, each group had to come up with a question they had to ask me. So it could have been based on something I had already said, but it was encouraged to like, you know, don't just ask me what animal I liked. You just saw the pictures on the PowerPoint of like what animal I like. So, um, you know, no like redundant questions, try to help them out and try to think of some original stuff. I, <laughs> the one year, the one year I was teaching, this was I think this might have been the, the first year I was in Japan. I was teaching at a kindergarten and asked the students, do you have any questions for me? And some of them were like, oh, how tall are you? You know, that kind of stuff, because they're like little kindergarten kids. And this kid looked at me and straight up is like, what's your favorite type of curtain? And, like, I didn't really understand the question at first. And I looked at the one uh, kindergarten teacher, and I'm like did he ask me what curtain I liked? And she's like, yeah. So she like asks him again, like, is that what you meant to say? Like, what curtain do you like? And like, what, what type of curtains do you like? And he's like, yeah, no, that's what I want to know. And I like looked around the room and in the kindergarten, there were like curtains on the windows. And I was like, I guess those are okay. Like, I didn't know how to answer that. I've literally never had anyone ask me what type of curtains I like. Um, I just never a conversation that I've had with anybody. Um, and, and then this past week I had one of the students at my junior high ask me, um, ask me about my eyesight. It's like, I think it was like a girl all the way in the back. She's like, so, uh, what's your, what's your, what's your, what are your numbers on your eyesight? I'm like, what? Like my eyes, like the, I was like, I don't know. I said, I just got my, I just got a new driver's license and they did an eye test and, I don't need glasses, so apparently it's okay, and the teacher kind of explained some of that, and she seemed to be okay with that answer. I don't know. I've never, also, I've never had that question asked of me either as a, as a teacher. I've had, um, you get questions like, you know, um, who's your favorite YouTuber? I got that a few years ago, and that's when I kind of realized, oh, like, these kids are watching a lot of YouTube, but anyways, try to make, as, (laughs) as I, stop rambling about, uh, questions, trying to make it, you know, interesting, trying to make it fun. Um, if you've been there for a couple of years, the students already know you so that you can kind of goof off with them a little bit during your introduction lesson and kind of make things fun. Like it doesn't have to be super serious. Like everything in junior high is like, you have to do the book and you have to do the workbook and you have to do the, the homework. And it's like, there's no real time for having fun with English. So, you have literally, like, maybe one class to, like, kind of goof off with them, goof off with them, um, and so, yeah, so, 
Um, your first week is probably going to be pretty slow. Um, you have plenty of time to catch up on, you know, lesson planning or whatever it is that you need to do at your school, whatever, um, you know, maybe it's just an opportunity for you to just kind of clean out your desk. I did that the other day. Like I didn't have any classes. Um, so I just went through all the stuff on my desk. Usually I did it at the end of the year, but I was, didn't really think about it at the end of the year this year, but you know, sat down at my desk and just went through all the stuff and just like, I don't need any of this stuff. I'm never going to use it. We use different material now, or we use different stuff. And so, so yeah, your first week could be pretty slow and, uh, hopefully it gives you a chance to kind of get acclimated to your school and adjusted to, you know, the new things and the new, you going to pull out, you gonna pull out in front of me. That might have been one of my teachers. I just gave like the stink eye to one of my teachers. But you know what? Learn how to drive. And I won't have to give you the stink eye, all right? So maybe don't be a bad driver. I'm leaving all of this in, by the way. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, head over to facebook.com slash Higgins in Japan. Or you can just leave a comment here on this video. Like that's probably the easiest thing for you, right? Because you're already here. Um, as always, um, Thanks for watching, and like I said at the beginning of the video, if you have friends that are interested in being a teacher or whatever, um, send them my way. Hopefully I can answer their questions. Um, if you can find me on Twitter, um, I'll answer your questions there too. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what this Friday video thing is all about. It's trying to make people better teachers. Um, speaking of making better teachers, if you're interested in listening to a really good podcast that I'm not on, so don't think that I'm promoting my own podcast here. Which, whatever. I could do that if I wanted to. Anyways, um, yeah, Making Better Teachers um, podcast. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Um, it's a really good resource if you um, are a teacher um, or are thinking about being a teacher and, and need some ideas or want to know how to be a better teacher. Um, it's a really good podcast. And I, I believe the episodes are usually like about 30 minutes long. So it's not that's not long in the, th in the, the scheme of things of of making yourself a better teacher. So give it a listen and, uh, tell Kevin, I said, what's up? Cause he's, he's cool. He, he makes a cool podcast and, uh, I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. Peace.